Remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. I thought I talked about this scene in my Chainsaw Man critique, but apparently I didn't. I also didn't talk about it in my Rise and Fall video. Episode 2 reminded me of the scene, and I have to talk about it. It's interesting, because this one scene is basically a condensed version of all of my problems with Denji, which I went into detail on in my Rise and Fall video. This scene is when Denji kills the Fiend. Here's the summary. Denji and Aki see a fiend, and Aki asks his partner to show him what he's got, expecting him to use powers, but instead, Denji kills the fiend with an axe. Aki asks why, and Denji says when he kills fiends, they get messed up. He acknowledges that he could have ended up like a fiend if things were different, so he wanted to give the fiend a painless death. Aki presses Denji and informs him that his family was killed by a devil. He wants to give any devil or fiend the most painful death that he can, and that everyone here is taking their job seriously except for Denji. He tells Denji to drop the sympathy, and asks him if he's trying to befriend devils. Under all this pressure, what does Denji say? He says, if there's a devil I could be friends with, then yeah, I would, because I don't have any friends. Aki is surprised and walks away. This scene was phenomenal. In this short exchange, Denji shows immense levels of empathy and compassion. These are murderous monsters he's fighting, but he's willing to give them a painless death because he understands that the shoe could have been on the other foot. This is Naruto levels of sympathy. The message that's being promoted is, have empathy and show kindness. This scene also shows just how much Denji's childhood has had an effect on him. He's so starved of friendship and love that he's willing to befriend a devil. Such a moving scene. And on top of that, he was able to stand his ground against his superior that was putting pressure on him, verbally and physically. Aki tried to play the my parents were killed by them card, but Denji wasn't falling for that emotional trap. He stuck to his guns and even made Aki waver and back down. That's such brilliant writing. But wait, the scene doesn't end there. After Aki leaves, Denji reveals that he was lying, and the real reason he didn't use his powers is because he didn't want to get blood on the porn magazines that were on the floor from a messy execution. <sighs> this scene gives me brain cancer, and is, like I said, a condensed version of why Denji is a terrible protagonist. But let's start with the writer, Tatsuki Fujimoto. This man wrote a powerful scene, but decided to subvert expectations at the last second to erase all of that brilliance in favor of making Denji a perverted loser. What was he smoking on, and is his editor smoking with him? This gremlin had the audacity to give us a gorgeous scene and then delete all that progress and replace it with crap. This is why I usually hate subversions in non-comedic stories, because then you get garbage like this. Fujimoto sure subverted something, and that something is called good writing. Denji went from being a character with morals, conviction, and depth. A character with admirable beliefs that he stood for. A character that could be a vehicle for more themes to be told through. To a character who stands for nothing but degeneracy and lust. He no longer has any strong and admirable beliefs. His background no longer connects to his present personality in any meaningful way. He is no longer capable of being a vehicle to express themes through. He's a loser now. All of this is basically what I said in my other video and this one scene puts all of that in full display. What's worse is that this is in Shonen Jump, which is supposed to promote valuable themes to its young audience. But here's CSM being subversive and telling you it's cool to rot your mind with porn and stand for nothing except for grabbing breasts. It's crazy that MAPPA was willing to trim and rewrite the second chapter, most likely because of the inconsistencies it introduced in Denji's logic. So why couldn't they trim this scene as well and make Denji a respectable human being rather than a degenerate piece of trash? All they had to do was cut the next scene after Aki left. If anything, the story would have benefited significantly more from rewriting this over the chapter 2 stuff. I take a slightly inconsistent Denji with respect and depth over a consistent Kumar Denji any day. In conclusion, this one scene shows everything wrong with Denji as a character and protagonist. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.